How are we all doing? Happy New Year to everybody. I think we can still say that. Um, what date are we? We are the 11th of January. So hopefully you can all hear me. Hopefully we're broadcasting nice and live here from Clarity Towers down in Kent for another session of the Pergamano Summer School. So we'll be joined by the lovely Linda Williams shortly. So I'll just give you a chance just to pull up a chair, get cosy, grab a drink. I've got my coffee on the go here. I've got my book ready uh, for some fantastic tuition from the lovely Linda Williams. Good morning, Hilda. Happy New Year to you. How are you all doing? Lovely Glynis, Sharon. There we go. The lovely Jilly's in the room with you today. So if you have any questions, ask away. I'll be watching the questions popping up. And um, if there's anything urgent, then Jilly will text me. So um, there we go. Text from Jilly sounds is good. Thank you, Jilly. They're the only texts we send to one another. Occasionally we send I love you and, and everything else, but we sit in the same office. So there's not much need for, for texting backwards and forwards. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, good morning. Oh dear. A bit fresh down here in Kent. Very sort of overcast, grey and drizzly. And um, right, I think without further ado, uh, we shall introduce the lovely lady herself. This is the first time I've seen Linda face to face. And good, good morning. morning, Lynn. Good, good morning. morning. How are you doing today, Linda? Good, good. You'd be pleased to know it's not raining in Wales. What? <laughs> no one here, Paul. Newsflash. Yeah. <laughs> That's breaking news. <laughs> We're not, I mind you, I have a confession to make. As we speak, <laughs> Rob is on the floor underneath my legs, mopping up water. <laughs> said, you know, we had trouble with our conservatory. Well, earlier on, I thought my slippers, I, I, my feet were cold, my slippers are wet. And I got up and I was sliding all over the roads. And I'm oh God, where's all this water coming from? So I, luckily Rob hadn't gone out because he was going into work. And uh, I called him in and I said, oh God, this bloody roof is leaking again. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't, it's the radiator, which is behind the television screen because we moved things around. And I think mm. probably it's bumped the radiator at some point. So oh <laughs> it is. He's just, he's just about finishing now. It's the best place for him at my feet. Really. <laughs> I'm not set. Poor Rob. Good morning, <laughs> Mr. Rob. He's bowing oh, out there behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be a fly on the wall. That was my panic this morning. So uh, he's going to have to come on from work now and move it all out again. We've only just got it set up. So, so if, if later on your hair goes all frizzly and frazzled, we know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can't be, I can't believe it. It's morning and all morning. It's not when oh, want to go smoothly. So, yeah. Oh, always the way. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we're we're back with the the Pergamano School again. I, I tuned in last week with you and Barb. Fantastic show, because I was in between TV shows, wasn't I? That's um, right. Yes, you were. So, you were. so, so Barb crazy. took over yeah. the reins. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it was yeah. it was great. I was there for the first half hour or so before I had to come and do all the Skype tests and everything else. But um, yeah. 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 It's, I'd forgotten about the multi-needle tools and, and the way in which you teach and you showcase and you really sort of break it down so that if people if people are tuning in today for the first time, we're on lesson number 10 of the Pergamano School. And on our website on claritystamp.com, there's a section dedicated to all of the previous lessons that Linda's covered with all the video tutorials, that or everything that you need to get going. So don't worry thinking, oh, I'm on lesson 10. I don't know where to go. You can always go back and it's all free of charge as well. And when we're talking about the, the multi-needle tools, we're looking at volume one that Linda wrote for us. And it really does break down because I know back in the day when we bought Pergamano, and Barbara and I were, were looking at all these tools and we were just stabbing bits of parchment to see what they did. <laughs> even though, even though on, the, on the end of the tools, you've got the little symbol 
but it didn't mean anything to us because we wasn't on that level of parchment craft. So we were stabbing all these bits of parchment to see, oh, oh okay, that, what yeah. do you do with that? And Something then, and nothing. Yeah, That's it's just a, a, a piece of parchment. Yeah. Um, just a piece of yeah. parchment with holes in it, basically. That's what it was for to sort of like an outsider. And then we had the lovely Linda and she said, no, you can do this, you can do that. And that's where the whole idea of the books came from, wasn't it, Linda? That's right. I mean, the books just touch on, on the corner of it. There's, there's way more. I mean, once you start mixing the needle tools up, what you can make is, is absolutely amazing. If you just stick to one needle tool, you can make a lot of things with, with that one needle tool, you know. But the patterns are endless, really. Um, and it's right. nice to, if you go through the book, it's nice to have a little play as well and make your own patterns up, you know. That's right. And you but you really do break it down. And some people uh, are good with books and reading them and following pictorial things. But some people like the, the audio and the visual. And so really, this is where Groovy Tuesday Strokes, the Pergamano School, really comes into its own weight, doesn't it? Yes. And I think a lot of people will think, oh, that book looks good. I'll buy that. And they buy it and they, they flick through it and then they put it in a cupboard and they... They're a little bit afraid to pick up a needle tool and actually try it. So that's I think quite... that's what this summer school is doing as well. It's it is. It really. <laughs> well, I remember back in the day, Linda, like we used to do the retail shows and we'd go and we'd sit, I'd demonstrate the groovy system with the starter kit. And then at the next show, people would come back and say, oh, I bought it from you last time, but I still haven't got it out of the packet. And I think that's yeah. what Groovy Tuesdays allowed us to do is that for all those people that that had it and bought it and it still stayed in that clamshell because they would think oh where do I start it yes. gave them the opportunity to take it out and really give it a go and yes. now when we see on Clarity and Groovy Worldwide the pieces of artwork that's being created um, yes. as a result of the, the tuition um, that we're offering it, it's absolutely amazing and it's not yeah. difficult really is it not really, no. And I mean, you know, you, you've got to give it a go, haven't you? And, and we, we hold your hand whilst, whilst you're doing it. That's and, right. Uh, I think people have progressed, or oh, they've progressed to, to, to a really high standard now. And um, I mean, there's lots of ways of doing lace work. You've got, actually, there are three ways of doing lace work. You've got the, the grids that Josie makes and demonstrates. Mm. So that's a beautiful lace effect. You've got the multi needle tools, but you've also got lace work within the plates. Because sometimes right. you look at a groovy plate and you can you can actually turn it into a piece of lace work, a border or something by cutting out of the two needle tool and the scissors in between. So you create you can create lace work with swirly lines and squares and and interconnecting lines. Anything that's got interconnecting lines, you can cut out in between. And you can make your own lace work. So you've got three ways of, of doing lace work on parchment. That's, I think with the with the groovy system and parchment and combined with the, the multi-needle tools, the groovy system, as we've always said, it gives you that confidence to get the beautiful line art, doesn't it? And yes. because that's what a lot of people struggled with. It's like anything, if you stamp an image because you've used the wrong ink pad and you don't get a really what you want or what you expect, then it can put you off. And but yeah. for me personally, when I tried parchment craft the traditional way many, many, many years ago, I was impatient, heavy handed. So the groovy system gives you that confidence to get going yes. and then you want to learn more. And then yeah. that's where experts like yourself and Josie and Tina Cox come into play to show us how easy and achievable it can be. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when we look at the book, the way in which Linda's broken this book down, she's taken the tools in various different stages. So this is here, this is the two and the three needle tool. And you can see what Linda's done. She's created this piece of artwork to show just some of the things that you can do. And then over on this side of the book, you've then got the guide for the perforating, embossing, and where you would do the cutting. Then on the next page, you have a breakdown or a, a, an explanation of the tools, why they exist. And then finally, you have the, the pattern that you photocopy and use as your traditional style of pattern. Isn't that right, Linda? 
That's right, yes. And we're working with the pattern on page 37 today. 37. So let's yeah. have a look. There's so many pages in this book. So we're at the end, you know, we, we, we're almost at the end. We've got two more needle tools to cover for this book. That's right. So on this, yeah. So on this one, it's a semicircle mini. And last week we were looking at the semicircle. So this is just a, a smaller size tool, isn't it, Linda? That's right. I mean, on that page you've got the semicircle mini and the swirl. I, I we put two on one page because the semicircle mini is very similar to the semicircle, and um, the the swirl. If they go well together if you use them both together and the swirl goes well with the semicircle as well i'm hoping i can get to show you that next week Super as well. deeper. Yeah. yeah so this is what we're looking at so we're working on page 37 so everyone at home if this is where we're at, at this um lesson number 10 so grab your book make sure you've got a copy of it that we're going to work with and then linda's going to hold her hand i'm going to hand over completely to linda I'm going to sit in the background watching and learning like everybody at home and any questions that pop up I will filter those in to the lovely Linda and um, are we ready to go Linda? Yeah we're ready to go. Okie dokie. Yeah. Right okay. I'm, I'm going to swap over give Linda the, the main screen. Okay. There we go. I'm just explain why this is skewed a bit in case you weren't here last week. This is I've, I've altered the position of my camera so that you can actually see the needles going in because my camera was overhead before you could just see my hands you couldn't see what i was perforated so it's it's in a fixed position now so um this is why this is a little bit skewed but it's better for you to be able to see me working than to see this as a perfect square yeah so um so this is a, the semicircle mini on this side here and then there's the, that's the, the swirl, okay? And you've got semicircle mini around there and the swirl around there. So today, I, I don't know if you remember last week, we did this little border here. Oh, we that was the, um, not the caterpillar, not the caterpillar, it was the um, funky tadpole, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did we did a little bit more of the, the perforating. Let me zoom that in a bit. We did a little bit more of the perforating in different ways. And we, we took this border here. Yeah. And then by combining the two, by moving it up a little bit, we created that. But it's essentially that twice and it's squeezed together. That's okay? right. Yeah. Right? So we've got a similar effect on there. So that's you've got one line there, and then you've you've you you've done it in reverse, and you've they're scores together. They've been scores together. So that that's a similar effect there. And nice. on this one, I have actually used the the moon tool, which we'll be coming to in the next book. Reason being, um, I thought it went well with the moon tool. So if you're wondering what these are, these are the the moon tool or the crescent, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so I thought we might have a look at um, doing this border here. Wow. Okay. So I'm going, I'm going to use a little bit of colored parchment again this week because I think, I think you can see it better when I use a color. So yeah. I'm going to take my, my little sand, my perforating sandwich, which is my piece of cardboard. Right. Um, um, pick a form and then I'm going to put my temper dryer sheet on top of that. And then oh, you remembered to... this week. I remember this week, and I'm going to put my pattern on top of that. And I'm also going to remember to rub my temper dryer sheet over the back. <laughs> before. Now, I've already done a little dog test for those of you that are wondering which is the back and which is the front. So I've done a That's little right. dog test because the, the, the parchment, the coloured parchment is brighter and more colourful on the back of the parchment. So that yeah. needs to be the side that you're working on. So do a little test, because you want your embossing to be white, not blue. Not blue. Okay. Perfect, so yeah. I will be working on the reverse. <coughs> so let's just 
Stick this down. Oh, I know what I want. I need a line for us to work from. Stupid. Stupid girl. <laughs> right. right. So you can draw a line in if you want, or you can do it without a line. It's up to you. Okay. Because you've got the, the pattern there, it doesn't need a line, but I, 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 I'd like a line to, to work from. Okay, yeah. so I'm just going to emboss a line in. Just do it quickly now. So this would be, for example, if you've created your piece of artwork and you've got a, a square or a, a, yes. a round frame that you've already embossed using the green right. tape. Yeah. yeah. And if I've got time later, I'll show you how to go around the edge or something. Let's do another one now and I'll, I'll show you how to go around the edge of a square. I love the nested squares. I think they're sort of one of the essentials to, if you're starting out on the groovy journey, to have a frame really makes a difference. Nested squares and nested circles, they're, they're, yeah. they're in my stash that, that, that's out all the time, you know. So um, I've got my line and you can see that's the back and it's blue. Yep. And that's the front and it's white. Okay. So I've got my sandwich back, my cardboard, my piece of pico foam, my tender dryer sheet, my parchment, my parchment pattern. So I'm going to be working on that one there. And I'm going to place the line. So do you need to turn that parchment over, Linda? Yes, you're going to oh, sorry, yes. In the front. Oh, <laughs> I need to place my line on the drawn line, okay, on the pattern. Yeah. It's in the right place. There we are. And stick that down. And now I'm going to take my semicircle mini. Let's just let me just show you the um, the tool first. So you've got the semicircle and the semicircle mini. Yeah. Okay, so That's the mini. I did this last week, but I'll show you again in case someone didn't see it. And that's the semicircle, semicircle mini. You've got six needles in that and eight needles in that if you're not sure which one you've got. And you can see that it's it's my, actually much wider. Yeah. Okay. And if I turn it over, those little symbols point in a different way. So, so the one on the left the mini, is like an open bracket yeah and that's the mini yeah and the one and, on the right is a closed bracket which is bracket. the normal one that's right yeah so actually if you use the two together let me do it on the edge you know, just for you to see let's move that up i think the water's gotten into my brain today pa <laughs> 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 I know <Right>. that feeling. <laughs> so I just do I'll just do it there, look, on this line. I'm going to be working on that line. Let me just let me just show you this. So you've got the semicircle. I'll use my groovy guard in a minute now, but just to show you this. And then you've got the semicircle mini. I'm gonna turn it so that I can see which way I so the semicircle mini will actually fit inside that. Oh. Okay. Oh, that wasn't very clever, but there we are. Okay. So what you could do then is you could actually emboss that line between the two. Yeah. There. Okay. And then you could actually cut that bit out, but you'd have to join it with a two needle tool there so that you've got a complete row of, of perforations to cut it out. Okay. Do you know if you can see that? Yeah. That's okay. it. So that also means then that you could um, pico cut the outer edge as well and you'd yes. get sort of like a very thin sort of bar. Yeah. It, it does look really nice actually when it's, when it's done. Yeah. If I get time after, I might show you that one. So this looks like it's got small semicircles and big semicircles, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, really it hasn't. So all you have to do, it's 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 one semicircle 
there, one semicircle there, and one semicircle raised a little bit up the top. Right. Oh, right. Okay. okay. I can, yeah, because yeah. I thought that was the larger one. No, no. And if you're going to do this, I would suggest that you do these little, the, the ones that are next to the line first. Yeah. So it's, it's, if you get the first and the last needle in, the chances are the rest are going to follow in the right place. Yeah. Okay. So first and last in, and then the rest will follow. Okay, and so by using the pico foam, it's just a shallow perforation, isn't it's it? It's a shallow perforation, yeah. Because you're going to emboss within as well. And if you do deep perforation, when you're embossing, because the parchment is weakened because you've perforated, you could actually rip the parchment. So it's always better to shallow perforate first. If you're not doing any um, embossing within, then you can do it. You can do it deep straight away. Right. Okay. And so then I've done the row along the bottom. And now, now there's there's no, I'm not putting any needles into any previous holes that I've made. Is that clear? Is it a bit blurred? Yeah, no, that's... My glasses? It's clear, is it? I, have you cleaned your glasses, Linda? Well, no, I've got my, I haven't got my fairy focus on them because the screen is further away from me. <laughs> it looks bl blurred. Uh, but I've got... <laughs> if I put my main focus on, I'd see it, but I'm, I'm no, relying on that... you to tell me if it's blurred. Yeah, no, no, I was remembering that conversation with you and Barb last week about, are you wearing the right glasses? <laughs> I know, I'm all, I've always got the wrong glasses on. So the, no, these needles now, this is, is a floating, it's a floating semicircle. It's not, it's not attached at all, but it is quite close. And by following the pattern, you're likely to get it in the right place, okay? Yeah. So I can see where my first and my last needle is going in. If you can't see it, try turning it a little bit like that. And then check. You can, you can then perhaps check that the first goes in and then turn your tool so that the, second, the, the end one goes in. So that might be an option for you if you're actually missing the holes. On the right, so rather than sort of trying to look over the top, you're sort of looking to the side of it. Yeah, bring it down, yes. Yeah. Or, I mean, you may find that if you do it upside down, it's better. You know, oh, of course, yeah. Of working. And I, I find that um, whichever needle tool I'm using, some are, some are different, some I'll use upside down, some I'll use, I'll use the right way around. It doesn't matter, does it? No. So I'm going to take my pattern off. There we are. And I'm going to emboss it now, okay? okay. So I've got my, I'm using my black mat because you can see it better. Yeah. If I wasn't, uh, if I wasn't doing this, I'd use my pink one. So I've got the back of my black mat and I've got a piece of cellophane over my black mat because it's soft. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a little bit heavy handed. So what I want to do is uh, stop me, stop myself from um, embossing it too much. So I've got a 4.5 to do the bigger one. Okay, okay. so we're working on, we've turned the parchment over as well. Over now. We're working on the back. So the shiny side. Yes. So make sure you come right up to the line. So all I'm doing at the moment because it's quite, it's not a big area to emboss, but it's not quite as small as the nice little dots that we make. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to let my parchment rest, and I'm going to go back and do a little bit more later on. Right. Okay. So, and I'm trying to get right down to the line. If you're not confident in getting to the line with this bigger tool, then. Um, by all means, go down to the three millimeter ball tool. Okay, so, so you can see that's quite pale. Yeah. It's not, it's not white, white, is it? Okay, so then what I do, I'm not going to do it all. So um, I go halfway along. I'd let my parchment rest. Yeah. Probably uh, 20 minutes is enough for, for a small area like this. If you were doing a big area, I would say, 
you know, leave it overnight and go back to it the next day. But um, 20 minutes is, is pretty good. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to take my three millimeter ball tool and I'm going to try and whiten it up. So you, you have to imagine now that I've, I've left it rest. Don't get any bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> you mean don't be impatient like I am? Don't be impatient, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I probably would do this maybe two or three times. It all depends on how weight I can get it. I suppose it depends on the pressure as well, doesn't it, that you apply? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know when I first started, I, I was sort of, because I am heavy handed. So over period of time, I get more confident. But back in the day, I probably would have taken five or six layers to get the whiteness, whereas now yeah. it'll be yeah. three layers. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Probably not quite weight enough for me, but I mean, if you do it too quickly, it does tend to go and it looks a little bit like cotton wool, but uh, yeah. Um, and, and also, because your parch my parchment is colored, it does behave a little bit differently, you know, to the, to the ordinary parchment. Mm. Uh, it does take, sometimes take a little bit more um, of the embossing. It, it needs a bit more to get it really, really white. Uh, another way around this is to actually rub the colour out from behind your embossing. Right. If you find you're having, you're, you're not getting the desired effect with your embossing, um, and you think, oh, it, it really, I'm embossing too much now, it's turning into, into cotton wool, take your rubber, your paper castell rubber, and just rub out the, the colour from behind. Right, okay. That would help as well, okay? And you're doing that on a hard surface. On a hard surface, it, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see the difference when I turn Yeah, you can. You can see that yeah. where, yeah, yeah there's, it's definitely got a blue glow around the outside. Yeah. yeah. When I turn it over, those are the ones that I've, rubbed out I don't so I can see the difference here it uh, might not show on the camera yeah. but um, if you are if you are having difficulty and you, you you're running the risk of um spoiling your piece of work by over embossing it or you want something really quick you know yeah. if you haven't got the time to do it then uh I would suggest you do that so I'm going to bring in my um oh what do you call it chip pico phone Pico, no, not the Pico form, the Super, super form. form. I'm super form. And my Pico form. Okay, so I've got two layers of form now. I've got the thin one and the thick one. And okay. I'm going to go for it deep with the one needle tool. <clears throat> this will give me a much neater lock to my work. And it will also give me the platform to be able to cut out around the edge. Now the other week I was I was doing some um, reperforating and um, for some reason I couldn't find my one needle fine tool. Yeah. So what I found was if I to reperforate, if I stayed with the pico foam and used my one needle bold. Okay. It didn't go in as far. That's a good and, idea. And then because. It only goes thicker the further you go down the length, the shaft of the needle. That's right. Um, yeah. And I found that that worked. It gave me, because then when I did find my one needle fine, I compared the two and I got the same result. Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't push the needle right in anyway, mm. because some people will go all the way. And I, I don't like the holes to be that big. So yeah. mine is going halfway down. So, yeah, I suppose... The tip of the needles are, are exactly the, the same um, size. It's, it's yeah. the, the, as it goes down further down the needle, it gets a bit bigger, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. So let me bring, I'm going to cut it out now. And I, I wanted to show you. So this is a picture now, an enlargement yeah. of this. Okay? Okay. So when I... Cut it out. Let me get a red pen. 
when I cut it out, I'm going to be cutting along there. Okay? But yeah. I, I'm not going to go in there. It's too close. If I go in there, I've got a, a wide cut there and a short cut there. It's not going to look that tidy. Okay. In the big picture of things, if you look, the finished example, you're not going to know why I'm going. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at your project, no one's going to say, oh, my goodness, she hasn't cut all the way down into there. Like I've done there. But I suppose that you've got a, that perforation adds a decorative element to it, though, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. And I've done the same there because I've done, I've done, I've on this pattern, all I've done is just embossed a little line along the edge of it. And right, like you did with the tadpole yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I didn't, I didn't actually cut all the way down either. So really so a good way one. of remembering. Yeah. That good one. way of remembering that is not to cut into the bottom perforation. Don't cut into that bottom one. Always stop short there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can do it, but I don't think it looks as tidy. So right, let's get my scissors. So I'm going to hold my scissors with the with the points up. Yeah. Like a spoon. Spoon. And I'm going to put my thumb on my first finger. That's how I prefer to use my Yeah, scissors. I'm the same. I'm the yeah. same. Some people use it with the points down. If the points are down, it's better if you put your fingers down into the scissors because um, it's, it's easier that way. Um, if the points are up, I would come up from the bottom of the scissors. Yeah. Okay. And the thumb and the first finger. If it's down, you'd probably be more comfortable using your first and second finger. I cover all this in the book anyway. So yeah. up, point up, thumb and first finger. And then you've got these fingers then will steady your scissors. The steadier your scissors is, the neater a cut you get. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to start on the edge here because I haven't done that one yet. So I'll show you a little bit on there afterwards. So it's scissors in, tip it down a little bit, tilt it down and snip. So if you put the scissors in, I'm going to turn my parchment a little bit now because my I don't move my scissors, I move my parchment. Yeah. So I tend to, what I tend to do is pinch it a little bit so that you can actually see the point. You see the point forming there? Yep, just see that. And then I snip. I don't snip until I see the point forming. So in, drop it a little bit. So it's only the points of the scissors that I'm actually putting in here. And so I'm, I'm missing that one perforation out and I'm turning my parchment all the time. Because what happens if you, if you don't turn your parchment your points are going to be uneven. What's interesting is that as I'm watching you doing this, I notice that your hand that's holding the scissors is not moving. Um, it's staying in the same position same under the position. summer school logo. Yeah, yeah. So the thing, and the thing is, you think, oh, I'm just turning my parchment a little bit too much all the time. It's time consuming. So what I tend to do is, I'll cut all the ones that are, that are going in the same direction. So always keep in mind that you're not going to do that bottom dot. Bottom dot. Yeah. It's magical yeah. just watching it come together. Yeah. And that's that click, that yes. snip. It's really, it's really, you can lose yourself in your, in your cutting. Well, you can lose yourself in the craft anyway, can't you? Yeah. I find sometimes Rob comes out and he's, he's talking to me. He's saying, Are you listening? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> or are you, but you just don't want to answer him. 
Yeah. Oh, he's not been again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear, dear, dear. Poor Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Is that my feet? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we go. I'm going round the corner now. It's nearly done. And it doesn't take long to to achieve, really, does it? Because if you're using the pattern and if you can extend that pattern, we've obviously given in I say we, the real we. In the book, you've just given us sort of like the sampler areas, but that pattern you can extend or shorten or adapt yeah, to whatever yeah. you're working with. Yeah, you just move it along. And I mean, you, when you photocopy a pattern, you can use it a few times. I will, if you've gone a little bit off and you've your perforations aren't quite where they should be, then it can be a bit confusing. So I would suggest that you, you photocopy it again. But I mean, yeah. you know. So you can use it, you can have, take as many photocopies as you want, can't you? So Absolutely. Cut that off there. Just get stuck somewhere. I always miss one. one oh, always. Two, I miss, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Only one look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's lovely. So there's that one. Um, so um, with that one, what, uh, what was I going to do? Oh, I know what I was going to do. So here we are. Look at that. So you've got lots of different ways you can you can decorate it. Let me just show you a few variations. So to create those those patterns you're doing, I know you've shown us before to create that beautiful shell effect. Yes. Is that using an embossing tool or is it using the needle tool? I'm going to use a one needle tool, but you can use um, a 0.5 millimeter tool, but your lines are going to be a lot thicker. Yeah. And um, you're probably better off using a one needle fine or a one needle bowl, really, because you're only using the tip after all, aren't you? Yeah. So if you were to, to get the little shell effect, I mark the middle with a little line. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to bring a make a line from that little dot. So be careful because my mat is, is the soft one. I went through on the first one, so you have to be careful. So I'm going to move from that center line to the next dot. So you're holding the, the needle tool at an angle so an it angle. doesn't actually perforate. Yeah, and I'm, I'm doing it ever so lightly. So turn your parchment a little bit. And also, you've got, you know, lots of, in your groovy plates, look at them with a different eye. You have lots of little shapes in there that you could possibly use um, that will fit within these um, spaces. And then you've got perfect, perfect little shape that fits within. Yeah, because Glynis on the um, Clarity Matters blog, um she does a fantastic step-by-step -step tutorial taking what you show us each week in the pergamano school and then putting it into practice with a, a design yeah she does some lovely projects and they, you know you, she does some little bite-sized pieces she takes some of the little tags and i love the tags and they're just they're just enough enough for you to get your teeth into these you know yeah and it just enhances then the design that you've yeah. created in the middle. There we are. I'm going to put those in by hand. It's taking too long. Oh, <laughs> oh you rebel. <laughs> there we are. 
like, so that <coughs> excuse me that's the um the, like the seashell effect as i yes yeah. yeah or you can actually you can actually um put in Oops. your straight lines i'm go i'm not going to use a ruler now okay i'm going to do it by eye so you can just take it from each dot you have oh, drop it down a little bit there we go lines. or you could actually take it across as well and have like a cross hatching effect yeah. wow all of that within the a shape of a multi-needle tool yeah who'd have thought that yeah. yeah so wow. should, I, should i show you how to do the um the semicircle mini within the semicircle that yeah that would be lovely yeah and then once you've you've done that i, I was going to give everybody a sneak peek of um the one day special that's coming up tomorrow okay night do you want to do that first or... yeah should we do that now okay, okay. right so let's have a look so i'll get ready once you're okay. doing that all right i'll swap you over into the the different screen oh there we go as if by magic <laughs> so tomorrow on the craft store at 6 p.m and 8 p.m uh, we're launching a brand new one day special designed by the lovely Josie Davidson. So when you look at what Linda's been showing us on how we can enhance our artwork by putting beautiful wedges around or using them as infills, then for those that you are familiar with Groovy and Groovy Tuesday and the Pokemon School, you'll be familiar with Josie's duet plate. So tomorrow is the launch of the first of two collections this year. And these are oh, absolutely beautiful. And what we've got, we've got a set of four plates. And as you know, we in the past, we give them themes. So we've had the kings, the queens, the princesses. We've had the palaces. We've had the French city, uh, Italian cities. And now we're going ooh la la with the French cities. And these are all based on diagonal grids. And so we've got the duet part, which is this side here is the embossing. And then this side has all been um, drilled to allow for the perforating. So when you can combine both together, you get that beautiful lace effect. You've got decorative elements on the inside. So we've got the, the Marseille, then we have the Paris. Okay, then we have the Bordeaux. I mean, Jim worked his magic to create all these lovely little flourishes and corners to enhance what you already have. And then finally, we have Toulouse. And I love that you've got the versatility. And Josie's done all that work for us. So there's no counting, there's no, it basically it gives you less room for error. And we've put these on A4 square plates because of the way in which the designs have been created on a diagonal grid. And you'll notice that the pattern is different on the different sides, okay? Now you get your instructions from Josie how to do all the cutting, but let me give you a sneak peek of some of the samples that Barb and I will be showcasing on the craft store tomorrow. Look at that, absolutely. And it really is achievable. But what I also love is that you can use elements of it. So you can create these lovely little corners. So you don't have to use the whole design. Another piece here from Josie. This is on the rainbow parchment and it's so magical. Let me just bring it in on, on this camera here using the beautiful floral alphabet designed by Barb. Okay, and then another one, I love this one. This is, look at that. Why Mayor Falls design a paper and parchment. Beautiful. And then finally, another of my favorites, maybe because it's P for Paul or P for Poppy. This one's from Jane Telford. Just creating that ribbon band effect. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. 
So that's a sneaky peek of what's coming up tomorrow. So the craft store on Sky Freeview and online at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And then on Thursday, 8 a.m., 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. while stocks last. So um, I know that the design team have had so much fun working with them. Aren't they beautiful? They're, yeah. they're really, really nice. And I think it's it's about sort of combining the different elements, isn't it, Lynn? Yeah. Yeah. And I think with the duet grids, if you're at the perforating, uh, at the pico cutting stage, you can do it. But if you're not, you don't have to. They work yeah. beautifully without any pico cutting as well. Exactly. I mean, you can use the pico dies, can't you, to do a little bit pico cutting around the edge. They're That's good. Right. And then, you know, just put the... the parchment in the, the pattern inside yeah. i think and i like the flourishes on those as well that I could they're lovely them. aren't they yeah they're jim, really jim came up with those yeah Beautiful. okay but, okay so you're going to show us then linda the inside let me just yeah swap those around there we go so okay. i would suggest that you do the and um, this is free hands now okay there isn't oh. a pattern on the um on the sheet for this but i would suggest that you use the Semicircle first, the large semicircle, and yeah. just go. I'm, I'm working along a line here now, okay? Let me get my um, groovy guard because it is moving actually. So I'm going to leave a little gap. So probably the width of a two needle tool. Okay. And I, I need to actually work down because I, I want to see the line. And it's easy for me to see the line. So if I put my, I'll leave that little gap there and then I can move this tool into position. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, turn it a little bit. So Do you want I'm to just gonna... move down a little bit, Linda? Just bring it towards you a little. Okay. There, there we go. So a little gap and then perforate. Now a question, if you, were really, really, um, what's the word? Um, oh, I can't think of the word, it's gone. There's a word, but I can't say it on air. Um, <laughs> I can't think of what it is. If you want it to be really precise with that spacing. Yes. Um, I suppose it's sort of like that uh, over compulsive disorder type thing. And you. Oh, yeah. Could you use the two needle tool to create yeah. that spacing? Yes, yeah, so it would take you a lot longer, but you could. Or you, you could. can actually put one one needle into the last hole that you made. That would, but then you you haven't got the gap. It's easier to cut out if you've got a little gap. But if you haven't got a gap, then you could actually do what we did earlier, and you can just leave the bottom needle without cutting into it. The bottom yeah. operation, you can do that as well. Um, you, I think perfectionist. You, that's the word I was looking for. Perfectionist. A perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna use my um, semicircle mini now. I'm just gonna do a little test piece to see that I've got it in the right right way. Yeah, it's a bit skew if So I'm gonna put one needle there. It's this has got to you've got to be a little bit more precise to this now. So. You might be better doing it upside down. Let's see. Let's have a look. Yeah, but in that one there. Yeah, not bad. Don't attempt this unless you can actually see what it's doing. <laughs> The right glasses, clean glasses, magnifying <laughs> glass. And when you're perforating along a white line, do try not to perforate on the line. Do try and like I've done that. Because <laughs> it really stands out, doesn't it? Believe it or not, it really yeah. stands out when you perforate that white line. I've done and it. It doesn't yeah. look too tidy. Um, no. It's much better if you leave yourself a little gap. So there you can see. Yeah. Okay, so next I'm going to now I'm going to emboss in between which no 
it's at this point where um, you've got to be really, really gentle with this now because you've got your embossing between perforations that are really, really close to each other. Okay, so I'm gonna use I've got a one millimeter ball tool here. Okay. You might be better to use. It all depends. Do you want to drop down a yeah. little bit, Linda? A one, a one fits quite nicely in there. Okay. I'm just going to emboss that line in the arm. Mm. Steady hand there. Yeah, and I'm being really gentle. That's why I'm going back over it a few times, making sure that. Wow. I'm sitting here with my sort of mouth ajar. Is you're watching why you do that? <laughs> I have to remember that there's a camera on in front of me. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> How did I miss that? Gosh. Okay. Yeah. I can leave it like that if you want. Or let me find my two needle tool. Well, that's the one tool I haven't got it. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to have to close this in the gap here to make sure. Yeah. I'm going to cut it out. I have to perforate. That bottom line. Knows, but yeah, making sure this is much easier when you've got a two needle tool. It's so much easier to you. <laughs> well, it gives you the automatic spacing, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to use my scissors. I would cut the middle out first because you need the stability of the parchment um, to hold it in place. Right, okay. Okay, so I will cut the middle up first. See, I would have gone the opposite way. I would have done the, the outside first. Oh, well, these are all wobbly then. If you cut them out, now these, they, they'll have a little wobble on. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it makes sense. Now that you say that, I think just automatically I, I would sort of go from the outside and work in. Yeah. But that makes perfect sense. And if you do happen to break a piece of lace work, if you've got grey hair, you can fix it. <laughs> what if you haven't got any hair, Linda? That's not very well, fair. Well, you could use a piece of cotton. <laughs> I want to show you one day how to do it. <laughs> Do is you you it's a bit fiddly, but you use perga glue and you make a little bridge and you right. stick it you stick it on both sides and right. that actually works. I've I've rescued a few pieces like that. It's very easy to break a little a little little mm. thread like this, you know, especially when you've gone quite close. Yeah, I can imagine. Actually, one of those is a little bit delicate. I'd have to find a friend that has some grey hair then, wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. I could send you some in the post. <laughs> that could be the, the new product from um, Pergamano. Yeah. Grey hair. <laughs> <laughs> Would we have different shades of grey? Yeah, it's got it's got to be blonde or a grey. Grey is best. <laughs> so now you can see it. The middle is cut out. So I'll just do the the edge now just be just I won't do them all because I, I did want to show you a little bit of embossing for a lady. I, I've that just seen out. um Glynis has just commented she said I pinch a white hair from Pete <laughs> 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 now what would Jane do? Jane's got bright oh, pink hair. Jane would have trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you, oh, Jane couldn't use her hair. It would show Unless through. she was using pink parchment, possibly. Oh, yeah, she could then, couldn't she? Yeah. <sighs> I've seen this type of, um, this beautiful scalloped edge on um, artwork that some of the design team do. Yeah. And I've always sort of wondered how it was done. Um, and it wouldn't have even crossed my mind to have combined the semicircle and the semicircle mini to do that. Yeah. I would have done it the long way with 
a two needle tool. It's not for the faint heart, did you know? No. <laughs> Everyone at home is probably watching going, oh. Yeah, a little go. Yeah. But it's you, practice, you isn't it? Like anything, yeah. uh, the yeah. more you practice, then hopefully the, the easier it becomes. Yeah, and like you say, you, you really got to be able to see it, you know, and kind of have a clear, a clear <coughs> of, um, of what you could do. Okay, the big reveal now. Don't slip it off. <sighs> Oops, move out of the way. There we are. Wow. Yeah, and you can see how you've got that that pico in the middle as well, in between yeah. the, the the scallops. Yeah. But uh, I mean it's got they've got to be equally spaced. And you can see where I've left the gap because I didn't want to put any pressure. On these, on the if weakness. they were closer together, I'd be putting more pressure on them. And I think yeah. for this purpose, it's probably best to leave a little gap, you know. Um, it, and it is if you're a beginner as well to leave that little gap. Is uh, yeah, is that's better. lovely. Yeah. So can I just show this little bit of embossing that yeah. someone asked me to show? Um, yeah, were, yeah, because uh, I mean, it's fight, believe it or not, Lee, uh, these hours. I know when we do TV shows, the, the hours just fly by. I mean, it's five to the hour already. I know, I, I have just, so much prepped, and, and my head is just sort of spinning with all these different sort of ideas. So, this was the teapot that, um, I can't, and I can't remember her name, I'm really sorry, um, that she used. Um, oh, this is um, um, so somebody asked a question on Groovy Worldwide. This is right, that's right, yes, yeah. And I mean, we can do this, you know, if somebody just messages me to ask, can you show this or can you show that? And it's, it's very, it, you know, we're, we're always happy to have country. Absolutely. So we was having trouble getting this nice and smooth. Right, okay. okay. So, I'm just going to hold it in place now. So I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to emboss the nozzle for now. And because she, the lady wanted this to be nice and white, she yeah. had embossed it, but it was very streaky with her and she didn't know why this was happening. So right. because I, if I want this nozzle to be white, instead of embossing it with a number one tool, I'm going to emboss it with a number two tool. So to give a softer I, line. I would use, yeah, I'd use the number one on the edge, maybe, okay, of the coffee yeah. pot. But, it, and it, you know, if I was colouring this, and if I wanted this to be white, I'd use the number two tool, but I'd use it really, really lightly. Okay. And I'm only going to put one oval in on the top there. So. Okay. Big That's difference. Nice. Yeah, so big difference. You can see the difference. So I'm going to bring in my black embossing mat. So I'm embossing from the back, okay? And yeah. what, what we do is, to get it nice and smooth, we'll use a six millimeter ball tool to start it off. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting, just I'm just doing that bit white. So what I would do is I would work from the line and just gently emboss up. No, this is too soft for me, you see. Let me put the my second thing on there. <laughs> if, you, if you've got a mat that's too soft, you are destined to actually feel us better. Now it's working. So it was giving me stripes because my mat was too soft. Okay. So, so the cello so, bag on the black mat and the black mat. Yeah. And what I'm doing is, is I'm not doing this. I'm moving over ever so slowly. I probably would do it a lot slower than I'm doing it now. But yeah. you, you just get the gist of it, okay? So this was very similar to the shadow embossing you showed us earlier on, I was gonna say this year, that's last right. year when we was looking at the butterflies. Yeah, that's right. So you can see 
that I'm, I'm, I'm embossing in the shape. I'm not going straight. I'm just taking the shape of it. And when I've done the bottom bit, I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to go from the top so that it meets the embossing that I've done. So at that point, Lindsay, if people are just watching for the first time, what you're, am I right in thinking that you're starting off sort of flat towards the tip of the spout and then as you get to the middle, you're sort of lifting off of the parchment? That's right. It's a, it's a press and a flick. And I prefer so like the aeroplane taking off. Yeah, I prefer to work away from me. Some people like to press and flick towards themselves. I find I get a better result if I work away. So I've got I've got two layers on there now. So yeah. I'll turn it over for you to see. Okay, you can see how smooth that is. Yes. Maybe I need a bit closer for you. Okay. Yeah, you can see that compared to the lines underneath where you were sort of moving across far too quickly. Yeah. So you leave it rest. Okay. And go back with a six millimeter ball tool. I would do this with a six millimeter ball tool. I don't think you need to go down to a smaller tool because, okay. because of the size of it. Yeah. Okay. And if you're if you're really really struggling, get it to a point where it's it's almost smooth, and use a white pencil. Oh. I get you off that. <laughs> Linda Williams. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put another two layers on there now, just on the bottom, just for you to see how it's progressing. Yeah. Okay. You can, re yeah, wow, you can see the difference. If you want brightness. to leave some shading, um, if we leave, say, if the light is coming from there, you might want to leave some shading there. So I'll do the top bit now again, just to just to join the two up. You decide where you put your shading anyway. It, mm. You know, everybody will, it all depends on the light of your subject or where the light is coming in. So if we put, there we are. Now, wow. if I, I can see a little line there, I'll get rid of that. It's because I'm rushing it is. If you've got lines in it, you see, the more lines you've got, the more difficult it'll be to get rid of them. So if you just move your ball tool over so that all your lines are touching, yeah, it's going to be smooth. If you do it, and think, oh, I'll go back and I'll fill those in now in a minute, chances are you won't be able to get it right. So if I start now to emboss there and start to introduce a little bit of shading, I think what had happened, um, the lady had used um, a ball tool that was too small right so there we are you can see now how um, it's starting to get white there i'm putting some shadow in there yeah Might a little bit more white there gosh okay yes beautiful oh you might want to leave a little bit more shading there you know you can use when you use when you embossing you should have all the shades from the, the grey of the parchment through to the bright white. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what you leave out is as important as what you put in when you're doing shading. So, right, okay. There we are. Super duper. Yeah. Love it. Wow. Another masterclass from Linda Williams. Wow. It's just, my head just, whenever I, I do these shows with you, Linda, my head just, it, it sort of swirls around and swirls around, much like the multi-needle <laughs> tool. <laughs> oh, that would swirl your head. <laughs> I, I, I think it, I think it because it, it just gives you, watching what you do, and I know you've been doing it for many, many years, but the way in which you break it down, you make it so achievable, and to have the book as that guide that you can flick through, you can photocopy the patterns, you can keep going back to referring to. And obviously the, these YouTube videos that are available 
on a dedicated section on our website, but also on YouTube as well. So that if you think, well, now, how did Linda do that? What did she do after she did that? And just go back and pause it and start it and pause it and start it and just take it at your own pace. It's just yes. technology now nowadays is just crazy. It really is. It is clever. I mean, all this it comes easy to me, but I mean it's taken it's taken a good few years to get to that level. But yeah, the more you do it, I mean doing that embossing. I don't even have to think about it. I just do it. You do know, it, it, yeah. it can naturally. And the more you do it, I mean, I, I, I just, I'll have to dig out some of my first projects. I mean, they were, they were, they were all fun. But the, 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 the more I persevered, the better it became. So it's, it's always good to keep what you did, first of all, and then a few months down the line, check your progress, and I can guarantee no one stands still. We all improve. Absolutely. I mean, I go back and look at when we go through some of the art boxes here um, for the TV shows. And before I actually joined Clarity, I was a design team member. And um, and often we go through and go, oh, this hasn't been on TV for a while. Let's let's shed some light on that. And I go through the artwork and I think, did I, <laughs> did I really do it? No white work. Colouring was very basic. I just yeah. traced out the design. Um, and I look at it now and then look at what I can do now. Yes. And it, it's just amazing the difference. It really, really is. Just a little bit of perseverance and, you know, you have yeah. a helping hand and, and you, you'll get there in the end. Mm. So, yeah. no, but you've got to be able to see it. be able to see it. Yeah, where's my glasses? <laughs> I need to make sure I take my glasses tomorrow to the TV. I'm definitely going to need those. Oh, definitely. So, um, so thank you once again, the lovely Linda. Uh, thank you, everybody at home, for joining us again this week. So next week we're on the what tool are we on next week, Linda? Is it the swirl? Swirl. The swirl. Yeah. Lovely. Swirl. So that that'd be interesting. That'll be nice. I like I'll that. I'll get my sleeve for that as well. We'll see if I can get it sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow. Um, on the craft store at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. for a brand new one day special with the designs from Josie Davidson. And then on Thursday, back in the Shack Shack with Barb at 10 o'clock. So, so thank you everyone for, for joining us again today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to ask any questions on Groovy and Clarity Worldwide and put your artwork on there as well. Absolutely beautiful. So I will see you again next week. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, Linda. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.